Hello gamers and gamers, what is going on? My name is Tenek127 and welcome back to another Outriders video. And before we get into today's video guys, I do have one big fat disclaimer I need to make. Today's video is sponsored by Square Enix. Square Enix and People Can Fly did hook me up with a review key of Outriders, so I just wanted to let you guys know that. But however, as y'all know here, how we get down here at Tenek127 Gaming, that's not going to influence my opinion of the game or anything of that nature. Now, what we're also going to do here is I'm going to give you guys a small beginner's guide. Teach you guys a few things about the game and stuff like that and tell you all what is going on here. Now, Outriders, if you haven't played it before, it is a looter shooter. Despite, you know, the differences it may have between other games and stuff like that and being a more a more complete game, it's still a a looter a looter based um based game. So no um don't let you know a lot of the other opinions out there influence the, the way you play this game and stuff like that because when they throw that notion out there, it does confuse a lot of people. And um, if you go into this game playing it, you don't think it's a regular looter shooter and just like some type of um, RPG, then you're not going to know exactly what to do. So in the t term looter shooter itself, I'm going to say this big and utmost forward tip, pick up everything resources, loot, gear. I don't care if you don't need it. The main reason for that is because everything in this game can be broken down. Here, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a nice fair example here and um, and show you guys and share a few things. So first and foremost, when you start up Outriders, you're going to be so selected with um, one of four classes. You're going to go through a small tutorial and, and all those things. So if you haven't been through that tutorial yet, I suggest coming back to this guide after you play through that tutorial and pick your class. But the four class choices you have are Devastator, Pyromancer, Technomancer, and Trickster. Now, the Devastator is more of a tank built class. It's just, you know, built around a lot of heavy armor and self-sustain. Pyromancer, pretty self-explanatory, fire-based, heavy damage, high DPS. The um, Technomancer is the support class the healer and the trickster is more so of a dps manipulator it manipulates time and space does a lot of you know um psychic kind of based moves and, and stuff like that the trickster is a really fun one to play so honestly my recommendation is i would say try and get familiar with all with all four of these classes mess around with them a bit before you know you get yourself solidly picked on stuff pick picking one that you know you want to go ahead and play now, we're going to go ahead and start here, and I'm going to just walk you guys through the UI and a few things, let you know what's going on, what um what you should be paying attention to, and stuff like that. This here is your gear screen. If you have played Destiny, The Division, Anthem, anything, this screen should look semi-familiar to you in, in some way, shape, or form. The only difference between those games and this one is this one doesn't seem to have just, you know, the overall power level. They break down the stats of every single of every single piece of gear you get. It's all split into four categories. Firepower, which is self-explanatory. Your weapons, um, firepower. Anomaly power. Anomaly power is basically how much your um your your powers and special abilities do, how much damage um those are, how much you give like status effects and things like that. And also, as you guys can see here on the screen, it tells you, <laughs> sorry about that, what exactly these powers are all for. So be sure to um, check that out as well if you need a, um, a second reference. But as you guys can see, thanks to my anomaly power, I get a skill damage bonus of 23.9. The higher you raise your anomaly power, the more powerful your skills, status effects, and everything are. Now that also means the effects that your weapons cause too. So keep that in mind. Um, your health, this is how much um, base health health you have. And your armor, this is how much you get, um, how much damage reduction you get. The higher your armor is, the more tankier you are, and the more damage you can take. It's pretty, pretty um, self-explanatory. Every single weapon here is going to have different stat numbers and, and things like that. And like I said, it's kind of um, broken down like, like um, similar to like Destiny's power level and, and things like that. Basically, the higher the number the stronger the gear piece is. Now, let me stop you right there. Just because an item is stronger does not mean you always want to pick it up. You want to go with things that correspond with your build, how you're making your character, 
and stuff like that. Now, let's say, you know, for example, right? We got to see, we have this purple assault rifle here. And I get another golden assault rifle or, um, or a, a, you know, a higher rarity one and, and things like that in, in my inventory from a drop from a boss. And I have a build that's based on bleed and and burning. As you guys can see, my um my my assault rifle right here gives me bleeding damage and burning damage. Well, if the new assault rifle does not offer those stats just because it's stronger, that doesn't mean necessarily it'll be the best thing for me because of you know how I'm playing my characters. So do keep that in mind. Now, another thing I want to talk to you guys about, especially when it comes to gear and different things like that, um. You can sell gear, you can upgrade gear, and you can also salvage it here in this game. Now, let me explain that to you. One thing I'm going to recommend to people is, and this is going to sound a little bit crazy. Now, you do want to sell gear, you know, for resources. The main resource you get in this game is called scrap. This is basically the currency used to almost buy anything from any merchant in this game. You're going to have other resources too, like leather, iron, titanium, then you have... Um, shards over here, thing pieces used to um, used to improve your weapons or make other weapons and armor and, and things like that. Um, one thing I personally recommend, this is going to sound crazy, I'm not going to say never sell your old loot, but for the most part when it comes to old loot in this game, you want to go ahead and always dismantle it. Just so you guys know, um, dismantling in this game can be a little frustrating, but the developers, they were cool enough to add a quick mark all dismantle button in here. If you just tap these two on whatever, and mind you, it'll also pick gear from whatever rarity you're aiming at. So for the um, for dismantle, for example, if you just want to dismantle all the gray gear in your inventory, you would click the gray button. All the green, you hit the green button. Only green stuff will be selected. All the blue, you hit the blue button. The blue will be selected. So on and so forth and yada, yada, yada. You guys get that? You know how the... Um, you guys know how the how the gear rarities work. Gray, common, green, uncommon, blue, rare, purple, epic, and then you know golden or yellow is uh, the top tier. Yada yada. You guys, you guys know how that system works by now. If you've played any RPG or looter based or loot based game, I'm pretty sure you're very familiar with that system. But you can use these quick marks down here to quickly dismantle gear. And the reason I say dismantling is better is because not only when you dismantle do you get um, do you get scrap, but you also get the other currencies as well based on what a, based on what the gear is made out of. Here, I'll give you guys an example. I'll break down all my green and blue gear right now, so you guys can see what I get from it. And as you guys can see, I got some shards. I got um some um some max health and anomaly power. And mind you guys, all of this stuff actually went into went into my stats a little bit too thanks to the um thank thanks to the shard so um keep that in mind i'm not always going to recommend you know um selling different selling different items and um and stuff like that i do recommend breaking a lot of them down now if you're hungry for currency and you know you just you need more scrap it's okay to sell but i would say always break your gear down if that's your if that's your number one option especially you know tons at a time and that also goes with the philosophy i said earlier Make sure you pick up everything, everything you see laying around in the world, whether it's, you know, um, different materials that you can drill into and, and pick up and other pieces of loot. I don't care if it's white rarity bull crap that, you know, you're trying to help your level one buddy just catch up in the game. Pick it up because spare materials always come to you sooner or later in these looter games. If you've played any looter, looter shooter type of game, you'll know that. Now this guy here, he is going to be your gear upgrade man. You're going to see them in this guy in every single camp of every area you go to. These, this is a base camp in an area um, here in here in the game. Every single time you move to an area, you're going to see a different base camp. There's going to be a place where you can change your character's appearance. You're going to have a stash where you know you can just um, keep items that you're currently not using or want to put away. And then of course you know you're going to have the the good old master crafter here. This is where you come to craft gear, upgrade it, and all and all that fun stuff. Now, there are a few things you can do with your gear. You can, I'll put a piece in here just so you guys can see. I may not be able to do anything to it just yet, but you can improve the rarity, which means if it's blue, you can, uh, you can uh, bump it up to purple. If it's green, you can bump it up to blue, etc., etc. You can raise this attributes, just overall make it, um, 
make it more powerful. You can put mods in it. Now, this is some of the some of the um, the best parts. A lot of these mods in here, the mods that you add, these can affect your abilities and also just things that you know the different gear pieces can do or weapons. So mods, make sure you know you have um, a really fun time with this. Feel free to experiment, put on different things. You can make guns, use all kinds of different elemental um, attributes and, and stuff like that. There's a ton you can do with mods. And also, if there's a gear piece that you really like and you don't want to let it go and because it has stats that you want that go, go along with your build and you don't want to get rid of it just because you found something stronger, just level it up. You can also do that, and that's a lot of times, now a lot of times, I'm not going to say all the time, because remember we're still early in the game and this is a beginner's guide, you can level these things up with scrap. A lot of times you can do that. Now, is that always going to be the case? I doubt it, but I am not completely sure because I just haven't got that far in the game yet. Now, the next thing I want to go ahead and talk to you guys is your quest map. And the reason I want to go ahead and um and take a peek with this is because um, one thing you want to always aim to do is knock out the side quests and everything that you see on your maps. Every new area, you're going to get a small map and a view of it. Make sure you unlock every single um, every single node and point points of interest. If you don't know what they look like, they're usually going to show up as um as a blue highlighted flag that's not filled in yet. You just stand here, hold X. As you guys can see, it says hold X to travel for me right now. But, you know, you just, um, you hold X, put your flag down, and then you can always fast travel to that point. And if you guys see the exclamation mark up here as well, these are side quests. They give you more XP, more loot, other things you can mess around with and, and stuff like that, more, more stuff for your character. I would highly recommend knocking out all the side quests you see in, you see in the area whenever you get into a new spot. And another thing I do like is a lot of times the side quests in this game, they will correspond with the mission you're currently working on. So if you're, um, say, you know, I'm probably heading out here to the cable car, which is the main mission um, me and my buddy Asylum and my girlfriend did last night, her side quest is probably going to send me off in that same direction to do something that's already on the way. Anyway, the side quests in this game are extremely convenient. And for the loot they give and the XP, I honestly wouldn't recommend um, not doing them. I would recommend doing as many of them as you can. Um, another thing we do have over here is, say you don't want to play by yourself. Well, you can use this to find a party. And remember, Outriders has cross-play, so it's going to search for members on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. I know there's a little something wrong with the PC um, cross-play matchmaking now between PC and console, but that the developers have addressed that that will be fixed in the future. So you'll have a whole pool of players, you know, that you can bring into your game or go into their game and help them. To boost yourself or you know whatever the case may be now good old Jakob over here he is basically your um your travel your travel guy he's going to always you know just be there for you to pack up your truck and move to whatever area you need to move to into the game and also you come here to customize your truck as well your truck is mostly you know just um just cosmetic stuff and and things like that you can also equip different emotes and banners and stuff for your flag your character and all those things but he's the guy in charge of that you're moving around he's always just you know usually hanging out here he doesn't really do much of anything else or at least at this point in the game now if we get the end game and i'm wrong about that you guys um feel free to forgive me on those last but not least let's go ahead into into the skill tree and then we'll go ahead and talk about the out accolades and world tiers if you've played the division before you should be pretty familiar with world tiers but we'll talk about them just in case every time you level up here in outriders you're going to get what's called a class point this is a skill tree you guys if you've played any rpg you probably know a bit how this works by now now the skill tree is broken up into three sections which kind of works like a subclass for your character my class for example um since i am a technomancer i have the pestilence tech shaman demo demolisher now just because you know you have these straightforward subclasses um given to us by the game doesn't mean you just pick one path and go that direction make a build that's comfortable for your play style look over this skill tree look over all these stats carefully and give yourself you know a a gist of where you want to go, what type of character you want to be, what you want to specialize in. Don't just, you know, go one direction because you see it's there, it looks cool, and stuff like that. Take some time, read these skills, look them over to yourself. Come up with something creative, look around and see what kind of weapons you like. Because, 
I promise you now, from here to end game, you're probably going to change your mind about three or four times. I'm only level 14, and I've already changed my mind several times. So trust me, <laughs> there's going to be um a lot to do there. Now, accolade levels, these are cool. These are pretty cool too. What this is is basically your um your challenges and achievements you get. Most of these you get just by doing regular stuff playing through the game. It's for like killing certain amount of enemies, completing certain side quests, killing certain bosses and stuff like that. And every time you level up your accolades, you're going to be given some type of special rewards. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you all the rewards because I have not unlocked them all yet, but you get rewarded for playing different classes, picking up different items, doing different things in the squad, doing different things solo, hunting down certain monsters, doing special things in combat. As you guys can see, they're all labeled they're all labeled here. The more you knock out and the more you do, the more your accolade level goes up, the more rewards you get. And you can get things from cosmetics to emotes. I believe that even rewards you some gear too, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken um, on that. Now, last but not least, let's go ahead and talk about your character's skills. Now, unfortunately, the thing with Outriders is I really wish you could use more skills at a time because, you know, there's just so much cool stuff here with your character. I haven't even got to mess with all of mine yet. But you're going to get one set to your left side of your controller, um, which is probably your left trigger, your right side, and then one that's pressed with both buttons at the same time. If you're playing with a controller, I'm not 100% sure what it will be on mouse and keyboard, but probably something similar now like i said when it comes to these three skills and like i was saying before in the class tree you want to pick skills that correspond with your guilt your build the type of player that you want to be so once again this is something you want to look over now these you can swap them out at any time so don't just get stuck on one set experiment around pick a set of three you know that works good for you and your team and the people you play with and what you want to do or you know even if you're a solo character pick something that's good for self-sustaining stuff like that me personally i made sure i threw on fixing wave because i play a decent amount with my by myself i also play with friends and this is a good healing healing thing also you know since the uh, um the technomancer is a support class it doesn't start with a healing skill right away spoiler alert you do get a healing ability a little later on you just need to hit level 12 or 13 and you unlock fixing wave it's good for healing and you know one thing i want to do is i want to get some um some good old gear pieces that support that ability just a little bit more but anyway guys um if this guide helped you be sure to give it a thumbs up and as always anyone else who plays this game be sure to you know leave comments down below let let me know any other extra tips or things you may you thought i may have missed for beginners we're going to go ahead and do another guide here probably around level 30 or 40 more of an intermediate or heading close into end game tutorial to um to help teach you guys a bit more about the game and stuff like that but this is just something basic to help get you started in the world of Outriders. And hopefully it helps you guys out on your journey through this amazing game. But anyway, guys, if you all enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up button for me. And I want to thank you all so much for watching. It's your boy, Tanek127. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Till next time, peace out. Take care.